Alrighty. Let me admit everybody. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. 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 Good to have you with us. How's everybody tonight? How y'all doing? <laughs> Good to see your smiling faces. Uh, Jeff is back with us tonight. <clears throat> And um, we should have some new folks joining us tonight as well. If you're new, uh, just say hey in the comments. And if, you, if you've if you been around for a while, say hey in the comments as well. Yes, thank you, Margaret. Good evening. <laughs> Good to uh, have you guys with us. So tonight, um, we're chatting on uh, on the book of Matthew. We are in Matthew 14, uh, 22. Oops. I have my communion cracker over here, and Jerry is very, very interested in that. Jerry, come on, say hello to everybody. Come here. All right, so this is Jerry. He hangs with me when we do this. Um, yeah, everybody's waving to him, kid. Uh, so he'll um, <laughs> he'll be walking around. Uh, so let me start us off with some prayer, and then we can jump into some worship, and then we'll dive into Matthew. This is going to be um, just hold on to your hats, right, Jeff? Yeah, so it's just awesome. Last week was amazing. T tonight's going to be amazing, too. So, hey, God, we just welcome you here tonight, Father. We thank you for technology, for the ability to come together and just open up your word and just learn about you, Father. It's amazing to um, just hear uh, your voice through your words. And, God, we just welcome you into it all. Thank you for our community, um, and thank you for what you're doing inside of it. And, uh, God, we just love you. And we praise you tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, let's worship, and then we'll get into some, some, uh, some other stuff. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever be. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever see. song we could ever sing. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart. Lead me in your love. 
Father, we just welcome you here tonight. And Jesus, we give it all to you. Come on.
Amen. Man, that's a great song. I haven't done that song in a while. Um, just such a great message. So, hey, welcome, everybody. Uh, good to have you with us tonight. If you're here for the first time, um, just write where you're tuning in from. We just want to, we'd love to see the, uh, the scope of it all, to see where folks are tuning in from and where, um, where you're, we have one, one person here, I believe, from Argentina. We usually have somebody that's tuning in from, what's, hey, what's up, Northern Ireland? Very cool. What time is it in Northern Ireland? Is it like 1 a.m. there? It is 1 a.m., yeah. Somebody else emailed me and said, oh, Ontario, welcome. Uh, somebody emailed me and said, hey, what time is your Bible study? Because I'm in the U.K., and I was like, you're five hours ahead of me. He was like, oh, sorry, going to bed. I said, that's all good, man. <laughs> but I'm so glad you can't sleep tonight and you're joining us, so welcome. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Waite Park, Minnesota? Very cool to have you with us. Uh, great. So this is something we do every Monday night. Uh, it's called Monday Night Worship Communities. This basically was started. Uh, we do a live stream on Monday nights. Um, did I just say we do this every Monday night? We do this every Wednesday night. Thank you, Margaret. Margaret, always there to correct me. Um, every Wednesday night, we do this Bible study, and it all started from us doing worship live streams on Monday nights. Uh, on Facebook and YouTube. So pretty cool how our little community has grown. And uh, we've seen people all over the uh, the country and all over the world tuning in. We've got folks from Australia and the UK, and now we have somebody from Ireland. So very cool tonight to have you with us. All right. So uh, last week, if you weren't here, um, we had a very awesome uh, study. It was based on Matthew uh, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. And it was all about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And... Um, it was all about dependence on him and how, uh, you know, the, the disciples were just like, hey, Jesus, what are you talking about? Like, this is not going to happen. We've only got, you know, five loaves of bread, two fish. Like, how are we going to do this? And Jesus was just like, just believe and do it. And here we go. So it was an incredible study. If you missed it and you wanted to tune in, just tune in last week so you can watch the replay. But this week, Jeff, do I need to unmute you? Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Let me unmute you. And um, we can dive right into... Oh. Okay, there we are. So everybody, now welcome, you did it. welcome Jeff. Jeff is coming to us from uh, also in New Jersey, Rutherford, New Jersey. Um, East, so, East Rutherford, East Rutherford. Uh, oh, I'm on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> Let's make sure we get it right. <laughs> uh, welcome Kat Karen uh, from Fort St. John, British Columbia. Nice. Very cool. Canada in the house tonight. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, everybody wave to all of our, yeah, good to have you with us. Um, so Long Island in the house. Nice. We are on Long Island tonight, Sandy. Thank you. Um, so let me read through the scripture here. Okay. I'm going to be reading out of the, uh, it, it, wait, what am I reading out of tonight? Yeah. The NASB, uh, we flip flop between the NASB and the NIV, but let me dive into the scripture here. And then what we can do is, uh, we'll just start walking through it literally verse by verse, which is what we normally do. And we are, um, amazed pretty much every one of these studies how incredible it is uh, to just see Jesus move. So um, if you're following along, verse 22 in chapter 14 says this, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, uh, we can find out, I think that's pretty late or early morning, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped and those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, you are certainly God's son. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennes Gennesaret, we're going to talk about that in a minute. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent word into all that surrounding district and brought to him all who were sick. And they implored him 
that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak, and as many as touched it were cured. So kind of an incredible scene. For those of you who know me, uh, you know that this is absolutely one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Um, I wrote a song based on this called Undertow, and uh, it's all about this whole scene where Peter jumps out of the boat and just starts hoofing it across the water, and all the other disciples were probably like, hey, dude, what are you doing? But let's back up a little bit and kind of just describe the scene here, what's going on. So they, um, we finished off the last section of this, like f- so from 13 to 21, where Jesus fed the 5,000. He was there uh, kind of getting mobbed. We've, you know, as we've walked through the book of Matthew, uh, Jesus is definitely going viral. There's a lot going on. Uh, and he just keeps teaching people and healing people. And it's been an incredible scene up to this point, And it's just not stopping. Jesus continues to uh, just draw these incredible crowds. So he feeds the 5,000. And then he immediately, like when that was kind of done and it was kind of mellowing out, he, he kind of says to the disciples, get in the boat and start going to the other side. Let's get, you know, he kind of sent the crowds away. And then he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now, I want to just stop right there, okay, because there's a bunch of stuff going on here that we need to just dive into. So I found a couple of notes. Um, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat, right? So Jesus felt that it was important for, for he and his followers to leave the area quickly. Perhaps this was to avoid the multitudes clinging to him as a potential source of constant bread. Therefore, Jesus compelled, he made the disciples get into the boat. A um, couple of more notes. Actually, there were several reasons why Jesus did this. He did this because he wanted to be alone to pray. Very, very crucial point. Because he wanted to escape the crowd and get some rest and because he wanted the crowd to disperse so as to avoid a messianic uproar. Uh, okay, I've never heard, Jeff, have you ever heard that phrase before? I'm not familiar. Messianic uproar is definitely a new one for me. Yeah. Uh, so and I, then they. So let me just let me look this up real quick. So they they reference over to math. Uh, sorry, to John six fifteen, where it says, "So Jesus, perceiving that they were intending to come and take him by force, ah, got it, to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself to be alone." Right. So this messianic uproar was basically the people coming to him and saying, "Hey, you are meant to be king," but Jesus obviously wasn't ready for that. He does everything in his timing, not the people's timing. Mm-hmm. And make um, John, him king by force. Like, you exactly, will rule us. That's exactly right. Or we'll... Uh, John 6, 14 and 15 tells us that the crowd responded to the miraculous feeding with a rush of messianic expectation. If the disciples shared this enthusiasm, uh, perhaps sensing that now was the time to openly promote Jesus as Messiah, the king, then it was more important than ever for Jesus to get the disciples away from the excited crowd. So um, kind of a crazy scene, a lot going on. I had never heard that phrase before either. Kind of neat to kind of just like, okay, the people, are, again, are trying to force their agenda, and Jesus is like, nope, this is all being done in my timing, in the Father's timing. We're going to be patient during all this, and we're going to continue to just do ministry the way that I've been doing ministry. And that, Jeff, you got anything you want to comment on that before we get up to him going up to the mountain to pray? Uh, you ju- just the, it, it's almost in the way where they wanted almost to, for Jesus to do things on command at that point. Right. Right. And you, you can't make God do things when God already has a plan in place. Yeah, and totally. So it just goes and reinforces that whole idea. Yeah. And then one other note on this verse, uh, Matthew used a very forceful Greek word here, which I believe I'm going to pronounce wrong, but I'm going to try it anyways. En, en ankasin, en ankasin, which can be literally translated as compelled or even forced translated by the ESV. It says made. It's basically a commanding order that Jesus gave to the disciples. He urgently sent them away in a boat with apparent instructions to meet him on the other side. One reason is that he wanted time alone, truly by himself to go up to a nearby mountain and pray. So let's, let's move on to verse 23. So 23, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Bunch of reasons why he did this. I mean, we've gone over this a lot before. We've seen Jesus retreat often to spend time with the Father so he can literally, uh, A, spend time with his dad, but B, re-energize and kind of recharge the batteries. He was jealous for time spent alone with the Father. In the midst of his great ministry to others, he did not and could not neglect prayer. Just take a minute 
and absorb that just for a second. How often do we, in the midst of our crazy lives, everything we're going on, work, family, church, all the stuff, friends, social life, all of that stuff, how often do we neglect prayer? I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it, okay? Let's not, like, let's just call a spade a spade. And as they say in the card games, let's just look. We just, we're guilty of it. It's just the way it is. Um, but Jesus, again, teaching us and showing us exactly uh, what it means to be a disciple, was jealous for time spent alone with the Father. Um, one scholar said, secret prayer fats the soul as secret morsels feed the body. And then that same scholar said, whilst the disciples were periling and well nigh perishing in the water, right, in the sea, Christ was praying for them. So he still is for us at the right hand of the majesty on high. So Jesus, even in the midst, he knew exactly what was going on out in the sea, and yet he was there praying alone to his father and praying for the disciples. Always, always, always intervening for us, praying for us. Um, okay, so Jeff, anything else you want to comment there? Nope, you, you covered that one. Okay. That was it. Uh, just, so, just to show how important it is you need that solitary time, uh, oh but God. it also goes to show... Um, how even though Jesus was all powerful with being God in the flesh, he was still God in the flesh and the flesh yeah. weakens. Jesus had that human experience just like we have it as well. He needed to eat, he needed to rest, he needed to do all those things that we need to do as well. Exactly, exactly. And I just didn't want to like, so 23 ends there, he was alone praying. And then Matthew definitely, you know, puts this verse in, but the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Okay, so the Sea of Galilee, definitely known for sudden storms. A lot of wind storms come up. We've seen that before in Matthew, in the, in the chapters previous to this one. During the storm, Jesus wasn't in the boat with the disciples. Very important thing here. He's been in the boat before with them during the wind storms, and he just kind of calms the seas, and they're like, who is this guy? And But this time, he's not in the boat, right? So Get to verse 25. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, I want to see if I can find... Okay, 3 to 6 a.m. Yeah. Is, is what one Bible says to me. Between 3 to 6 and 3 to 7 a.m. It was yeah. what, It's right before dawn. And it's it's interesting. You know, we, we, have, we have the terminology now of the, it's the witching hour. And it's almost, almost the same way. So depending on the culture and what was going on, it's either the time where you just don't go outside because they were worried about unclean spirits. Right. And it's just before getting up before the sun to where that starts the work day as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the cultural reference Bible says literally the text speaks of the fourth watch of the night based on the Roman division of the night into four parts. The fourth watch refers to the final hours before dawn. Jesus was approaching them from the east, which might make his approach more visible which also might make it might make it a little more kind of creepy because he's got like the sun coming up behind him, which m may lead them to say uh, or Peter to say, "Is that a ghost coming at us?" <laughs> right. So, um, uh, and yeah. and the Greek word there is phantasma, meaning like a fan, exactly like a phantasm or phantom. So they weren't expecting this to be like a friendly kind of a spirit or specter right. they were fearful they were legitimately terrified for their lives yeah i mean this walk on the water must have been like a crazy shock right to them to see jesus walking on the water and one note says they were indeed troubled and they cried out in fear yeah i'd probably do the same thing um you know you don't know what it is especially well we can get into all the and loch ness stuff if we want but <laughs> let's not <laughs> well part of the part of the jewish culture the Jewish culture thought that the depths of the sea were Hades. So when they went out over deep water, they legitimately thought that they were going out over, over the edge of hell at some point. Yeah. So you stay close to shore, but I mean, going over deep seas in that manner, it was terrifying to them. Yeah. All right. So here's a great, so apparitions were usually frightening, uh, Jewish tradition, I think this is going to get into what you just said, warned of dangerous uh, night spirits. On a popular level, many Gentiles and probably a number of Jews believed in ghosts. Although such a belief technically contradicted mainstream Jewish views of the afterlife, 
uh, heaven or hell and future resurrection, Gentiles often believe that the ghosts of those drowned at sea hovered over the sites of their deaths. Oh, my goodness. So that adds a whole other picture to this that's just crazy. Right. Um, okay, so uh, let's keep going. So Peter cries out. <clears throat> uh, they were terrified, and, and Peter cries out, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. So this move by Peter, there's a couple of different... Um, a couple of different thoughts on this that I found. I just want to make sure I'm not missing. Yeah, so, you know, one one titled this section, Peter's Bold Move and then Subsequent Lack of Faith. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to the water. So he said, come on out. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go towards Jesus. So Peter's saying to him, Lord, if if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And this note is interesting. It says, we have no idea what prompted Peter to ask such a question, but his faith in Jesus was remarkable. He really responded to Jesus' invitation and got out of the boat. Um, Peter's question here, if it's you, is a real condition, almost since it's you, right? It's almost like he's saying, hey, Jesus, since it's you, ask me to come out. So the request is bold, but the disciples have been trained for some time and given power to do exactly the sort of miracles Jesus was doing uh, as of Matthew 10, 1, right? When we, we read that a couple couple weeks ago where Jesus said, you're going to go out and be able to do the same uh, miracles that I'm performing. What is more natural than for a fisherman who knew and respected the dangers of Gal- Galilee to want to follow Jesus in this new demonstration of supernatural power? Kind of crazy, but when you think about it, and I talk about this all the time, like how uh, flabbergasted must the other disciples have been when Peter stood up and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out and I'm going to come out. So Jesus says, yeah, come on out. And then he probably looked around and the other guys were like, well, go ahead, right? And then he puts one foot over and the other foot over and stands on the water as a miracle happening. I mean, right there was enough for the price of admission. And then he starts walking towards Jesus, which was, I mean, it's such an incredible scene, and I think so many times we've heard it so often that we just get so like, whatever, you know? Yeah, he walked on the water. Great. Jesus did it all the time, but it's such a miraculous scene going on here and such a test of Peter's faith, right? Just absolutely incredible. Um, I just find this little passage, this little section, like really, really just a- an amazing little section. Um, Let me see if I've got you, Jeff. You got anything else that you want to add to this before? Well, yeah, before we even, even prior to Peter walking on water, we have to take note that there's two huge declarations that Jesus is making here. Uh, So the fact walking on the lake with this miracle, he's actually showing and declaring that he is God in the flesh. Right. Because in Job 9, 8, It says, he alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. Right? And that right there is saying that God, the spirit of God, God's spirit, the manifestation of God walks on water. But you also have to take into consideration that you have this chaos going on all around the disciples. And in the midst of this chaos, you have the spirit of God hovering over the water. Yep. And where do you remember hearing that one from? The Tovu Vavohu. Right, Big, right back to the very beginning in Genesis. Yeah, the Ruach of God. The Ruach hovering. And this is the exact same thing because they're likening him, even though it's a ghost. A ghost still technically in that sense is a spirit. That's right. And then where Jesus is saying, take courage, it is I. The Greek word for it is I is ego ami, which is translated as i am he's not saying don't worry it's me he's actually saying i am don't be afraid and this is a declaration going way back to exodus 3 14 when moses approached god and god introduced himself to moses saying when they ask you who sent you tell them i am sent you yeah the i am right you know it's just i am right I am. That's it. He's like, not the, it's like, tell them I, it's me, tell them me, my, me yeah. sent you. 
right? And it's repeated in Isaiah 41.4, 41.10, and 43.10, where God makes this same exact declaration of I am. You know, and then you have Peter here who's pretty much saying, like, I want to walk with God. I want to, I want to be that one who walks with God as well. I yeah. want to share in this special time. I want to be in this miracle. Incredible. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Talk about peer pressure. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I mean, Peter is the, is the quintessential example of, you know, uh, doing before thinking, right? Man, he, he, he jumped before he looked. I always say Peter was like the rebel of the bunch because he was just like, oh, that's Jesus. I'm going. And the other right. makes no mention in any of the gospels of any other yeah. disciples saying, Oh, Hey, Peter, maybe I'll go first. You know, there's none of that. Right. It was just Sit back, Peter, my turn. Out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, such a lesson in faith for us again, you know, again, we get this really just incredible lesson in faith. Yeah. Jesus says, come on. Okay. We're going to go like, that's all that Peter did. I am going to go. That's it. The other guys, you know, who knows? Who knows what the scene was? Maybe they were like, hey, Peter, are you sure you want to do that? You know, holding his coattails back or something. But he was like, I'm going. And it's such an incredible testament to faith and trust and surrender to Jesus in the midst of this. Um, it, it, it just blow. It continues to blow my mind. This this short little story. I just love it. Um, OK, so and I love. Je so just uh, if we can just hover on that for a minute just hover on the spirit, hovering on the water. Um, that is such a, a, it's just such an incredible image. Uh, and we spoke about this at our retreat from 2020. Um, and uh, in the beginning, right, we all know the first couple of verses of Genesis, but the spirit was there hovering over the water. And it was, in, and as Jeff said, it was in the midst of the chaos and in the midst of the clutter, in the midst of the craziness and all of that stuff. And again, the scene here is literally a parallel to that scene. We can't miss this. In the midst of all of this, we can't miss this. Because Jesus so often refers uh, to the Old Testament so many times. We even have, you know, Jeff, I got to grab that book that you recommended the other day. Can you, do you have that in front of you? Yeah, I do. So there's this great book, if anybody wants to nerd out on this, but between comparisons of the Old and New Testament and all this stuff. I love um, this one. It's a great okay. find, and I, I've been borrowing it endlessly from my lo local library. So for one, get a library card, because it's a yeah. $60 book, yeah, yeah, and if you like book. building up your library, yeah. build it up. Commentary on the New Testament use of the Old Testament. So yeah, Tracy. Tracy will tell you. Tracy's got an impressive library. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing, you know, once again, we see Jesus, you know, ref who, he did it, of course, be so we could find this. But, you know, once again, he's he's referring back to all the way back. Like it wasn't just like, hey, something from Isaiah or Elijah, you know, all, this was all the way back to the very, 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 very beginning. And the, the, the craziness that surrounded the, the spirit as the spirit hovered before creation. And then you have Jesus walking on water, the spirit literally, ghost literally hovering over the water and saying to the disciples, yeah, if you believe it's me, come on out. Join me in the midst of the chaos. And it's such a beautiful scene. Um, I just hope you guys just... I just got chills thinking about it. So I hope you get chills as well. It's incredible. It's incredible. So Peter said to him, Lord. Oh, oh go ahead. Go ahead. There's, go ahead. There, there's another Psalm that goes and declares this as well. Psalm 77, 19, your path led. Now this is also going back into the Exodus, but your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, hmm. though your footprints were not seen. You know, just another amazing where you can't discount what the Old Testament has to say in preparing the minds for who Jesus was going to, who That's he, right. who he was, That's what right. he was going to do and how our lives would be affected by him. Yeah. Really, you can't, you cannot have like the, the New Testament gospels and epistles without having the Old Testament 
preparing that way and just being that 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 guiding path for who Jesus is and recognizing it. Yeah. Cuz you have to keep in mind Matthew is the gospel of the disciples. This is the most Jewish out of all four of the books and Matthew makes these references for a reason. Matthew out of all four gospels has the most Old Testament references outside of Mark, John, and Luke. And we have to take that into consideration for a reason. Yeah. Here's a cool note. Um, Peter, you know, we got to assume that he's fairly well, uh, fairly well scripted on the Old Testament, right? Like he read it. And, um, this note in the cultural reference Bible says Peter had biblical precedent for stepping into water with faith in the divine command, though in ex uh, though in Exodus and Joshua, the water parted rather than sustained mm. one's weight. Right. So that's a really interesting. So if you go back to wow. Joshua three, eight, it says you shall moreover command the priests who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant, saying when you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. So if Peter's thinking, and I'm hoping that he was, I never made this connection before, but if Peter's thinking about his uh, studying, like his what he's read before in the Old Testament, he's like, hey, wait a minute. You know, those old guys, they were walking on water. They were doing some stuff on, around water. They were figuring out a way to get over the water. So... Here I am with Jesus standing right in front of me. I've seen all of these amazing miracles that he's done in the last, you know, year or so. However, they've been walking, however long they've been walking with Jesus. And he's like, I'm not going to be afraid of the water. And that is a powerful, powerful statement. Um, so, okay. Boy, we could talk about this all night. Holy moly. Uh, Let's do it. So he cries out. It's a ghost, and they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Okay, so interesting little mm -hmm. twist in the story, right? So we, we see Peter with all this incredible faith, and then all of a sudden, the wind, the wave, something is coming along, and it just rocks his faith for a minute and he starts to sink peter um, didn't know the psalms that's right peter didn't know the psalm psalms 69 one through two save me O god for the waters have come up to my neck i sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold i have come into the deep waters the floods engulf me yeah i'm worn out calling for help my throat is parched my eyes fell looking for my god yeah. It's like, oh, Peter. Yeah. You, you didn't have to do that, buddy. <laughs> G watching Jesus was enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> P Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus, but he saw the wind. It, it, one note says it was boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to sink. It's a wonderful picture of walking in faith, right? Is what this note says. Showing that Peter was able to do the miraculous. As long as he looked to Jesus, again, we have to like keep that in mind. Always focused on Jesus through all of it. When he saw the wind was boisterous, he was troubled by fear and he began to sink. Peter walked on the water, but feared the wind. And look, you know, very, very human nature, right? To be afraid. Um, often achieving great things and at fault in little things. Beginning to sink, he cried out and said, Lord, save me. Even when Peter failed... Jesus was there to save him. Peter knew who to call to at the moment of crisis. Another huge point. Jesus then brought Peter, Peter back to the boat. Um, Spurgeon says this, what a sight. Jesus and Peter, hand in hand, walking upon the sea. Um, I just want to go through, there's a couple of cool notes here. So when Jesus says, oh, you of little faith. Once Jesus rescued Peter, he spoke to Peter about his little faith. This little faith led to the doubt and distraction that made Peter sink under the wind and the waves. Uh, Clark says this, It was not the violence of the winds nor the raging of the waves which endangered his life, 
but his littleness of faith. Let me just read that again. It wasn't the violence of the winds, nor the raging of the waves, which endangered Peter's life. It was his littleness of faith. There's only one word in the original for the phrase, O thou of little faith. The Lord Jesus virtually addresses Peter by the name of little faith in one word. I don't have a translation for that. There must be some translation that translates to little faith. It's all one word. It's not little space faith. It's little dash faith. It's one word. Peter here shows us the weakness of little faith. Little faith is often found in places where we might expect great faith. Okay? Walking on water. Uh, the expectation is great faith because Jesus is right there, but he shows us little faith. Little faith is far too eager for signs. Little faith is apt to have too high an opinion of its own power. Ooh, talk about ego, right? Little faith is too much affected by its surroundings. Little faith mm. is too quick to exaggerate the peril. Uh, yet Peter shows us some strengths of his little faith. Little faith is true faith. Little faith will obey the word of Jesus. Little faith struggles to come to Jesus. Oh, man, that's great. Little faith struggles to come to Jesus. Little faith will accomplish great things for a time. Little faith will pray when it's in trouble. And little faith is safe because Jesus is near. Man, that, I may, maybe I'll write those out and just put them in the notes here when we, when we rebroadcast this. Because those are really, really, really good. Um, yeah. And we see Jesus uses this terminology uh, several times in Matthew. It's the Greek word oligopistos. Mm. Pistos itself meaning faith, oligos meaning, meaning small or lacking. He used it uh, when he was talking about, um, he's using the parable of um, the birds in the fields. He's using it uh, when they are on the boat the first time uh, before they come across a demoniac when they're stuck in the storm at this point in time and then again afterwards in two chapters from now when they feed the 4,000. Yeah. After they had already witnessed the feeding of the 5,000 and they still doubt and have little faith regarding it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Spurgeon says, you do believe and if you believe, why doubt? If faith, why little faith? If you doubt, why believe? And if you believe, why doubt? Jesus only asked this question once. Pe oh, sorry. Why did you doubt? Jesus only asked this question once Peter was rescued. Yet at that point, it was an entirely reasonable question to ask. Why did Peter doubt? Doubt is literally to be divided in two. True faith is single-mindedly focused on Jesus. If you believe a thing you want to... Uh, if you believe a thing, you want evidence. And before you doubt a thing, you ought to have evidence too. To believe without evidence is to be credulous, and to doubt without evidence is to be foolish. We should have ground for our doubts as well as basis for our faith. Uh, Spurgeon said that. Um, man, there is so, so much here. Um, do we... Jeff, did you have more on the doubt here? I've got a couple more things if we just want to keep rolling through this stuff. It's something that we all encounter. You yeah, know, yeah, we without have, a doubt. You have, to, yeah. you have to take a look into exactly what happened as well and when and how the doubt was encountered. It's during one of the greatest things that Peter could never do on his own. In the presence of Jesus... He's doing something that's never been recorded in humankind ever. Hand in hand with Jesus, and still he had the doubt regarding it. Yeah. And it's how relatable is that when, when we see that God is carrying us through something, we still have that fear of, is he going to leave me though? Am I, am I going to be on my own? Am I not going to be strong enough? Am I not going to be good enough? Am I not going to be smart enough? Am, am, am I not going to be liked? And we, and, and it does, we worry about the things that aren't going to matter rather than focusing on having our feet on solid ground, even when there's waves crashing under us. Yeah. And that's exactly what, what Peter had been going through. 
because Jesus wasn't stinking. Jesus, Peter walked from the boat to Jesus and then sank when he, when, when he doubted. Yeah. His look, his faith is imperfect, right? Just like all of ours no. is imperfect, but it's it, one of these notes says it was imperfect, but nevertheless, it was bolder than the faith that the other disciples had in the boat. Right. Yeah. So where do you want to be? If you're sitting, you know, just with your, you and your family, your friends, like, again, to bring this into 2022 now, like, where do you want to be? Do you want to have the boldest faith or do you want to be the one that follows the one with the faith? Like, I want to have the boldest faith. I want to, like, really dive into this faith, trust, surrender, all of these three words that we always, always talk about. They're so, so hard. And we get yeah. so wrapped up in ourselves and all of the stuff that pulls us away from that faith. But... Um, man, bold, bold faith. Maybe that's the the phrase of the word for 2022 is just to have bold faith. Um, and keep in mind, Peter didn't swim back to the boat. Oh, no. Jesus lifted him up and he yeah. walked back with Jesus. That's right. Jesus reached down, pulled him up just the way that he does every single day for all of us. He reaches down no. and he pulls us back up and says, come on, come on. Why did you doubt? Right. The question is a valid question. Right. Let me just read it right from Try me. yourself off now, Peter. My yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah, look yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah, You're in yeah. what a mess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, You're good robe, Peter. You're good robe. Yeah. Yeah. Nice try, buddy. Um, you have little faith. Why? Why did you doubt? He never walked on water again, though. I'll tell you that. No, he didn't. <laughs> and then when they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who are in the boat worshiped him, saying, you are certainly God's son. They moved quickly from fearing the storm to worshiping Jesus. Yep. Was, I mean, obviously, a very logical reaction to uh, the scene that was going on. It was this crazy storm, the chaos, the Tova Vavohu was here. And then Jesus is like, whoop, and just stops. I mean, it's an incredible power that Jesus is showing here, walking on the water and then calming the storm. But in the midst of that, showing the love to take care of Peter in the midst of all of those crazy surroundings, right? He's bookended by like the, the these, this incredible showing of power on both sides from the weather and from Jesus. And in the middle of it, he reaches down and he says, Peter, I've got you and I'm going to take you back to the boat. Um, this is uh, Poole says, this is the first time we meet with so plain and open an acknowledgement of his being the son of God. I mean, it's just, a, it's an incredible, incredible scene. So again, to bring it to 2022, what does that look like in your life? There's chaos. I'm sure we could go through, we could open up all the audio on this Zoom call and we could talk for the next four hours about the chaos in our lives. There is chaos. We are, you know, it's just a fact of life here living on earth. There's chaos surrounding everything. And yet, the one true north that we can always have is Jesus. Jesus continues to pull us up out of the water and pull us up out of the chaos and up out of the mire and says, I've got you, I'm with you. Do not doubt. Why did you doubt, okay? Why did you doubt is the question he asks Peter. And Peter, it doesn't even say that Peter had an answer, unless I'm missing something here. Well, can you answer? What could be? What could possibly be an answer? It's like, ah. Uh, yeah I mean, right uh, yeah 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 and then and then they, they just go right into you are certainly god's son so th the answer was that like why did you die I, I have no idea but you are god's son there is no doubt anymore that you are no. the son of god you are the messiah you are the promised one that we've been hearing about through these first 14 chapters yeah yeah debbie right mm -hmm. how often do people put faith not only in themselves but other people instead of Jesus. And that's so, so true. Like our, we have to kind of break the mold of what that looks like. And then the last couple of verses, they crossed over, they get to, this is going to go a little longer tonight, guys. Hope you don't mind, but they get to Gennesaret and Jeff, I just want to like let you yeah. roll with this because this is really important. Um, and when the men of that place recognized him, they sent word again, that people started coming. Jesus started healing all of that stuff and literally just hey, can we touch the hem of his garment to be healed and so many that touched it were cured but there's something about Gennesaret that is super super important Jeff uh, roll into that I've got a couple notes here so, as well but let's let's get into it so two big things with Gennesaret in the 80s 
they actually found, if you Google Jesus boat, they actually found a boat that would have been similar during the culture that they dated back to the first century at the time of Jesus. Now, they don't know for certain if it's the actual boat that Jesus and disciples used, but they do know that this is the type of boat that would have been used. They found a 27-foot boat uh, during a drought season um, that was like just stuck in the, in the sand and, and the mud, brought it up. And it's no wider than, you know, you have your, as, as wide as you could sit in a boat with maybe a couple of arms out like this. And that's how wide the boat is, 27 feet long. And you have to imagine that this is what the disciples would have been sitting in that, you know, if there were strong winds and waves, this thing could have been toppled over right. quick. So number one, it's a very important archeological find. So can I just jump in just for a minute? The boat, one note yeah. that I found about the boat itself, right? And the, the crossing over, after Jesus pulls Peter out and they get back in the boat, the Gospel of John tells us that the crossing over was a miracle to get because obviously the boat was that size, mm -hmm. but the boat was miraculously carried across over to the other side from where they were. So anyway, good valid point. Go ahead, keep going. Yep. Gennesaret itself uh, is a very interesting area. It's translated as either harp because of how plentiful uh, that how plentiful the fruits and vegetables were in the area that it was to see it was as beautiful as hearing the harp sound or garden of the princes. Uh, it was very fertile soil. It was in bloom with seasonal fruits all year round. And then they said it was bountiful. One of the things that I found on here was on a website called International uh, internet stand, um, international standard bible.com where the fruits were so beautiful that the fruits of Gennesaret had such high repute among the rabbis that they were not allowed in Jerusalem at the time of the feasts, lest any might be tempted to come merely for their enjoyment. Mm. Okay. So here's something that you have to take a look into now with a Jewish mindset, because the Jewish mindset, Eastern, Eastern theology, Eastern mentality is very image-based and it follows patterns and it follows, um, if it says it here, it says it there, then it has to be cohesive and combined together. So you have chaos on the water. Yeah. You have the spirit of God hovering on the water. Okay. You have God being revealed you have God performing a miracle of restoration. And then you have God bringing man into a garden that's known to have forbidden fruit, to not be touched at certain times. And what's happening together with this whole story is you're seeing a pattern of the creation story of Jesus confirming of being God in the flesh and leading man from chaos to paradise. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. And I've never seen that before mm. until I looked on an app called Bible Map and realized that this one word, this one garden that's mentioned maybe twice total in the Bible has this much history and this much uh, significance as to what the imagery of God is. It's being shown through the gospel. Yeah, amazing. And again, like just in this small section, we've got another scene of the goodness of God. We have Jesus pulling Peter out, right? Uh, just how he pulls us out of the, the mire and the muck and everything. And then we have him leading all of them to, to paradise, basically. Uh, in, in, is it Gen Gennesaret? Gennesaret. Gennesaret. Yeah, I said it right. Yeah. Um, which was uh, Gane Sarum, uh, they think is one of the, the translations of it in Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, just an absolutely incredible um, story here. Doriano, thank you for sharing that verse. Uh, th <laughs> that really is, like, that should have been Peter's answer, but he probably, you know, thought of this later. But he said, you know, uh, John six sixty eight says, Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and we have believed and you have come and have come to know that you are the Holy one of God. I mean, just incredible. Mm. 
So between the last story last week of talking about Jesus feeding the 5,000 and this week, I mean, you could really sum up a lot of what is going on here with just the love of the father for his children is, is out of control at this point. He just continues to provide manna from heaven for the, the people in that story with the feeding the 5,000. And then he, he, then pulling Peter out of the water is such a metaphor, such a parallel to pulling us out of fill in the blank. Like mm. we just, if we can't see it here, where are we going to see it? And if we can't answer like Peter answered and said, Lord, who are we going to go to? Like you're the one. You've got the words of life, you and you alone. So I think this beautifully, hey, you got you new guys, um, we're, we're going to have a little communion here, if that's okay. So if you want to take just a minute and go grab a cup of something and a cracker or whatever you want to do, you can do that um, and take communion with us if you'd like. We do this every, every night, every Wednesday night when we grab this Bible study. Um, but we really feel strongly about communion. Communion uh, is... It's this time where we can just take a minute, step back, thank God for his sacrifice and his provision, right? Again, we are being fed um, bread and, bread and, and the, the, the blood, like the, the Jesus' blood of life, like he was crucified for us. So that last supper, that night before he was crucified, he sat with the disciples and he said, this is my body that's been broken for you. And this is my blood that's been shed for the sins of many. So tonight, let's just kind of roll into some, um, some time to just worship and uh, just take communion. God, we thank you for your body, Father, that was broken for us. God, we just praise you tonight for the sacrifice that you made for us. If you believe tonight, take and eat. And then that night he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Father, we thank you for your blood shed for our sins. It's incredible to even just focus on this for a minute, but we thank you for it, God. Uh, if you believe, take and drink. Suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift word cry And from north to south and east to west We hear Christ be magnified we the whole
Amen. Amen. Well, uh, thank you guys for being here tonight. This has been awesome. Hey, you new guys, um, I just want to introduce you to something that we are all a part of here. Um, this is a community called Monday Night Worship Communities. And it's, again, based on a community that we start on Monday nights uh, on Facebook. And um, it's turned into this thing called joindaysband.com. And what this is, is we have this kind of smaller community that comes together. We pray for each other. We worship together. We learn about Jesus every day. And then we come together every Wednesday night for a Bible study. And um, we've got kind of this membership site that we, uh, we come together in. And um, it's kind of an incredible place. Uh, we have over um, 250 hours of content inside the member site. We get daily devotions that go out every single day to your email address. Um, we have Bible studies every Wednesday night. We have worship videos in there uh, that are a lot like what you just saw here. Um, we have uh, over 100 hours of um, these devotions, these video devotions that we have in there. Um, when you join, I send you five of my CDs. They're worship CDs. Uh, you get a T-shirt that looks a lot like this one. And um, we just have this incredible community of people. We have a forum in there uh, where folks are praying for each other and worshiping together and just being a part of something that really um, has taken on a life that I never thought it would have. And you guys that are members here, just, you know, kind of maybe type in the comments, like, what your favorite part of the membership is. We've had some people that have become friends inside our member area uh, that have driven 16 hours to see a concert together. Uh, some folks are going away together on weekends, um, just hanging out and doing these things. We have these retreats once a year, sometimes twice a year. Um, and it's just been incredible to be involved in this type of membership site. And it's been absolutely incredible. So um, we wanted to invite you to join tonight if you want to. Uh, I've got a special link for you guys. Um, I'm just going to throw it up in the comments, but you can check out more info there if you want. Um, it's actually a really cool uh, site. And what, oh, hold on. Let me just throw this up in here. Here's the link. And I'll email this to you as well, to the email that I um that I pushed over to you uh, over the last week or so, but we'd love to have you join us because we are really serious about um, about learning more about Jesus, as you can tell. Like, I don't know if you've ever been in a Bible study before where they walk through it verse by verse and they take, you know, an hour or so. But another cool part of our membership area is uh, the first few dollars of a membership goes straight to helping us sponsor a child. So we've sponsored 18 kids in our member area, and that means that we've given kids food, clothing, clean water, and healthcare, and most importantly, we give them the hope of Jesus in their life. And uh, we sponsor through Holt International, and actually the kid that we're looking to sponsor tonight, over the next um, bunch of days, is uh, this little boy, his name is Tanacorn. <laughs> He's a little year and a half old kid from Thailand, and he wakes up every morning, he has trouble finding food and clothing and clean water and healthcare. So what we do as a body of Christ is we come together in our member area, and all of the money that comes in gets pooled to sponsor uh, these kids. So we're literally giving them all of this amazing stuff. So, um, and then the balance of your membership money goes straight back into this ministry to keep uh, these Bible studies going, to keep me on the road. Um, it's a, This is a 100% full-time ministry for me. This is all I do, and I am super focused on it. We try to do about 100 shows a year, and uh, at those shows, we see more kids like Tanacorn get sponsored. We had 90 kids get sponsored in December alone of last year. And uh, when I go out and play, we see lives changed. I get to pray with people. We have some members of our community that come out and, um, and pray with people and introduce themselves. So it's been absolutely amazing. We have a group from Rouse's Point. You can see up there. Everybody away from Rouse's Point. And there, so that's a Bible study that started because of this Bible study in Rouse's Point. Um, and we're trying to make that happen all over the, the, the country and the world where people just come together. And um, it's just been amazing. So I hope you hear my heart in all of this. Like, this isn't like, hey, we need your money. It's not about that. It's about coming into a community that's doing nothing but trying to spread the hope and the love of Jesus more and more and more every single day. And uh, what we do is, our motto is we just want to be a reflection of him every moment of every day as we walk through our journey 
Um, so we'd love to have you join us. We'd love to be praying for you and worshiping with you. We'd love to have you on our Bible study next week. Um, so check out that link if you want to, and uh, I'll email it to you as well, um, probably tomorrow sometime. And you can dive in a little deeper if you want, but just cut and paste that link. And you can, what happens is when you go to that link, that gives you access to either our annual or our monthly um, program and it's discounted. So you get a 25% off discount just because you were here tonight. So we'd love to have you join us. Okay. Does it sound good or is it like, yeah, I don't know yet, but and it's up to you guys. But yeah, so it's, it's a really cool place. Um, Shona, you are very welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. And I hope you, uh, you join us. I hope you just kind of get involved a little bit more. And if you just want to take a baby step, like Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, we do worship every Monday night. It's a live stream on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, so I'll send you a notice about that as well. But we'd love to have you get into the community so that we can keep this train rolling. Uh, we're starting to book up shows. We're at about, I want to say, 35 or so so far for the year. Uh, maybe more if I, if I have my calendar right. But... Um, It'd be amazing to have you guys with us. So check out that link. Um, and I guess that could be it. Sound good? Do you want me to give you a tour of the site? I can do that if you want, or we can worship a little more. What do you guys want to do? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Sandy says, join us. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> worship more, says the diehards. Okay, yeah, well, we can do another. Yeah, what do you want to hear? Let's let's go there. This is going to get cool. Uh, yes, I know, Margaret. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we did a, I just finished a record um, of hymns. And uh, I'd love to, um, I just, anybody love hymns? You guys love hymns? I love hymns. So let me do a hymn or two for you. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. They fail not as thou hast been now forever will be. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses.
Amen. All right. So actually, that song, I was just <laughs> singing it. I was like, oh, yeah. All I have needed, your hand has provided. Kind of ties into exactly what we were just talking about tonight. Uh, Doriano, thank you, brother, for, uh, for suggesting that. Um, man, let me do one. Is one more cool? Is that okay? I didn't. Uh, I forgot to download this one. Let's see. Here it is. One, two. Oh, man. Sorry about that. This is for you, Sandy. Ten years later, I remember blue September skies. I remember how the city streets were so alive. Ten years later, there are questions that still haunt my mind. Places that are hard to find, places that remind me of you. In this life, there are no guarantees. There's a hope, there's a faith, there is love for the whole human race. There's a hope.
That is uh, a tune of mine called There Is Hope, and I wrote it for, um, uh, we start a movement called the There Is Hope Movement, and we work with uh, folks in the addiction and recovery community, and um, uh, there's a long story behind it. If you want to check it out, you can go to my website, and just or type in thereishopemovement.com, and you can read the story there, but... Um, I love working in that recovery community because uh, it's just incredible to see those guys and girls get pulled out of their addictions and start a relationship with Jesus. It's just been awesome to watch. So, hey, um, let me play one more. It's a tune called Undertow, which is kind of what this story that we read tonight is kind of based on. And um, hopefully you guys dig it. Maybe I'll play it with, uh, with all the fixins, as they say. Hold on a second. Yeah, let's do that.
thank you. Yeah. Man, that's a good one. All right. So, um, okay. Well, thank you guys for being here tonight. Very cool. Jerry has officially fallen asleep uh, right there. <laughs> but that's usually what he does. Um, well, thank you guys for being here. Again, if you want to join us, please do um, use that link. And um, if you lost it, I'll put it up here again. But um, just shoot me an email. Uh, just reply to one of the emails that I sent to you. And, um, or there it is again. But I can send it to you. And get, if you have any questions at all, please um, send me a note. Like, I'm all about, as a lot of you guys that are members know, like, I'm probably a little too open and a little too honest. <laughs> But it's all good. Um, we we would just love to have you guys with us uh, every Wednesday night to learn more uh, from Matthew and, and the books that will go beyond that. And then also, we're just trying to be Jesus in the world. So um, we'd love to have you with us that way too. So thank you guys uh, for being here tonight. Let me just pray us out. Um, God, we just uh, thank you, Father, for um, pulling us up out of the undertow that we get stuck in every single day. God, you continue to amaze me, and I know that a lot of the folks here on this Zoom call um, are amazed by you every single day. So God, I thank you for uh, all that you give us, the provision, um, Father, just everything, everything in our lives. And God, I just pray that we wouldn't take it for granted and that we would just uh, push it back out into the world just to be a reflection of Jesus every day. So God, we just welcome you into it, welcome you into our community, uh, welcome into our our jobs and our families and our friend circles, our relationships, just everything, Father. Let us uh, just do all that we do to glorify the name of Jesus. So, God, we thank you for nights like tonight. Thank you for some new folks that are here, and thank you that we can just come together um, and learn about you in freedom. Uh, Father, it's just incredible. So we praise you, we love you, we honor you, and give you the, all the glory tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. Well, thanks for being here. Um, hopefully, we'll see you in the member area. Hey, for you guys, um, there's a new song of the month in there. Um, a little, I'm two months behind, but I'm getting there. Creativity cannot be forced. All right? So um, check it out if you'd like. And uh, there's new devotions that will be going up tomorrow. Uh, and now that my voice is back after COVID, um, I am going to start recording some worship videos again. So uh, we'll start putting those up again in the, in the member area, too. There's just so much junk in there, so we just want you guys to, to use it all. Um, if, you, if, you haven't, if you haven't downloaded the app yet, download the app. You can listen. I've got all uh, 14 records on the app as well in the member area, so there's just so much stuff in there. But um, just use it, okay? And uh, we'll see you guys on Monday night for Monday Night Worship on Facebook. And then if you're here with us in the member area, we'll see you next Wednesday night for our continuing study. We're going to be jumping into Matthew chapter 15. Uh, so that means we are over halfway through Matthew. It's only taken us a year. <laughs> Amazing. Um, all right, guys, have a great night. We'll see you all on the next one. Oh, and just so you know, I recorded this, so I'm going to post it up and I'll email it to you new guys and uh, you guys that are members already. It'll be in your membership area so you can watch it again if you'd like. Okay. All right, that's it. I'm out. Have a good night. We'll see you all soon. Take care.